Of all the creatures on this world of ours, there is no greater hunter than the spider. While all predators are adept hunters, fishers, or catchers, the spider is capable of almost every tactic. Some spiders build large webs to catch airborne prey. Some build trap doors to jump out at their food. Some will fish for their food, deploy nets, leave trip lines, and others will stalk and pounce on their prey. There are even spiders capable of tactical awareness and planning that outwit and outsmart other spiders. Indeed, there is a reason we fear the spider. They are one of the most alien of creatures to us with eight long spiny legs, multiple eyes, massive fangs filled with venom, and the capacity to appear almost anywhere in the world. They have incredible intelligence, are cunning, and venomous to boot. We are lucky they are too small to truly pose a threat to humans in general, and though there are some spiders that are dangerous, none are large enough to consider us prey. That said, because of their strange and frightening forms, as well as their ability for creating beautiful silk webs despite their frightening appearance, the spider seems to command both aspects of terror, but also beauty. A strange paradox of power. And the Japanese knew of this power. In fact, many believed that certain spiders had supernatural abilities, and that they should be feared as well as revered. For this reason, the Japanese have more than a few spider yokai and spirits within their folklore. One such spider, and perhaps the most famous of all of them, is the Jorogumo. Its name is broken into two parts. The word Joro means whore or harlot, while the word kumo is the word for spider. Modern translations have tried to rewrite the word as Joro to mean entangled, though this is more an attempt to lessen the harshness of the original meaning. To be, f to be very clear, it does mean whore or harlot spider. Like many myths and legends, the Joro Gumo actually is inspired from a real creature. The real Joro spider of Japan, or as we know it, the Golden Orb Weaver, is actually a harmless spider. Though it is rather large, known to build enormous webs capable of even catching birds and bats, their venom is ultimately harmless to humans and most avoid biting humans. Some consider them a rather beautiful specimen for their beautiful yellow, red, and gray markings. These spiders were once only found all across Japan, except for Hokkaido. However, thanks to frequent trade, they have begun appearing in America, particularly in the southern United States, in rather large numbers. Check this out, they're creepy and crawly, and apparently they could soon take over the East Coast. University of Georgia researchers are taking a very close look at the movements of the Jural spider. Now, while the giant spiders are native to East Asia, you probably come across the blue, black, and yellow striped legged arachnid. Now, the good news is that they are mainly harmless. Even if one happens to bite you, just recently experts discovered the spiders have a higher probability of surviving a brief freeze. Now, this would also allow them to move up the East Coast and colonize in colder climates. If it can survive in the northern reaches of Japan, we, we sort of figured that it, it would probably survive in like the upper reaches of the U.S. Things like, you know, the upper uh, mid-Atlantic. Andy Davis is a research scientist in the Odom School of Ecology at the University of Georgia. He tells us Joros don't appear to be harmful or have much of an effect on the local ecosystem. In fact, there are quite a few that have been made their home in my own neighborhood. Their webs are large, though invasive, and they're known for having a golden sheen, making their bodies and their webs actually quite beautiful to look at. However, that which bears remarkable beauty can also be remarkably dangerous if underestimated or taken for granted. For you see, the ancient Japanese believed that if a Yoro spider lived to be 400 years old, it would gain supernatural powers and learn to take on the form of a beautiful female human. Thus, she could use her newest hunting tactic, luring human men desperate for love or sex into their lairs. This is what makes the Jorogumo such a frightful yokai. They appeal to the desires of men and can be very hard to deny. And yet, to accept them means certain death. For the Jorogumo cannot be reasoned with, nor do they desire compromise. All the Jorogumo seeks is food so it may lay its eggs. The Joroguma make their homes in caves, abandoned homes, dark caverns, or even behind waterfalls where few would dare find them. Despite being powerful shapeshifters, Joroguma are rarely confrontational and almost never battle their prey, but prefer subtle and more nefarious approaches. 
they uh, are actually very, very timid. I've got some research ongoing in my lab right now looking at their behavior. And it turns out it, they're, they're more timid than most of your native spiders. Indeed, the Jorogumo have many clever ways to approach and snare their prey. There are many stories of Jorogumo and their exploits, but there are three that are retold more often than others. In one story of the Jorogumo, an old samurai is sitting on his porch and singing in the garden. While singing, a middle-aged but lovely woman approaches him and tells him that her daughter has heard his singing and has fallen desperately in love with him, and she wants to be the old samurai's wife. The old samurai is flattered, but says that he's already married and cannot take another wife. He agrees, however, to at least meet the girl. He follows the woman to a large manor in the woods beyond his house that he did not know was there. When he meets the young daughter, she is indeed gorgeous. She tells the samurai that she loves him and begs him to take her as his bride. He responds that he cannot, for he is faithful to his wife. But the girl insists, saying, You must take me as compensation, for only five days ago you drove away my mother and nearly killed her. The samurai was stunned, having no memory of doing this. He became nervous at the insistence of the two women and promptly fled the manor. Suddenly, the old samurai woke up, seeing that he was still sitting on the porch. He called his servant to him and asked how he had fallen asleep here. The servant explained that he had been sleeping there for a while and had never left that spot. The samurai was surprised, for the manor and the girl had felt so real. It was then he looked and noticed a young female spider building her web nearby. And he suddenly remembered that five days ago, he had driven away another spider very similar to that one from his home. In this story, the Jorogumo is clever for she uses many tactics at once to lure in the prey. Sex appeal, promise of marriage, flattery, and even guilt, all in an attempt to lure in her food. Had the old samurai not kept his wits, there's no telling what may have happened to him. But this is not the only story of its kind. There once was a samurai who, while meditating in his home one long night, a strange but lovely woman approached him carrying a child in her arms. She claimed the child was his, as she and he had been wrapped up in a night of passion years ago. The samurai doesn't believe her story, but is polite to her and all the same allows her to stay the night until he can sort this all out. But the woman insists that the boy is his, and she begs that he take responsibility and marry her. Angry, the samurai pulls a sword on the woman for her rude manners and for her impertinence. He takes a swing at her and slashes her. She flees from his sight and into the attic of the home. When he follows, he sees the corpse of a large two to three foot long spider dead from deep cuts to its body. The gravestone of a little boy laying by its side that it had used to appear like a little boy and hanging from the ceiling above its head were the many mummified corpses of past victims of this Jorogumo. A haunting story, but not quite as gut-wrenching as the other, for in this the samurai kept his wits and addressed the danger quickly. The Jorogumo's ploy didn't affect the warrior. But the third story of the Jorogumo has a few different endings, though they all start the same. At the Joran Falls of Izu, a man stopped to rest, but as he did, he suddenly saw silk begin to wrap around his legs. He quickly threw them around a tree next to him instead, and moments later the tree was yanked from its roots and dragged into the falls instead. So he went back to the village and told everyone what he saw. All were warned never to go near that waterfall. However, a woodcutter visiting the village years later, who had no knowledge of this, went to visit the falls and accidentally dropped his axe in the water basin. While struggling to think of a way to get it back, for he couldn't swim, a beautiful woman appeared carrying it to him. She told him to take it, and to never tell anyone that he'd met her. Now in one version of the story, the woodcutter breaks this promise and tells others of the woman. The next day, he's disappeared from the village, never seen again, with webbing and silk all over the inn that he had stayed in. However, in the more common version, the woodcutter fell completely in love with the woman and returned every day to visit her. But each time, he would come back weaker, paler, and more fatigued. A Buddhist monk noticed the man's condition and followed him on one outing to see what was happening. The Buddhist monk saw the woman in threads all about her, so he shouted a sutra and the Yorogumo fled back to her lair. The monk warned the man what she was, but the man still loved her and longed for her, so he visited the mountain Tengu spirit to beg permission to marry her, despite what she was. Now in the more common version of the story, the Tengu denies him permission, and the man returns to the falls anyway, where he is almost immediately tangled by spider thread and dragged into the lair of the Jorogumo, never seen again. 
But there are some more modern and happy versions in which the Tengu challenges the man, saying, if you see her in her true form and do not scream or flee, then you will be permitted to marry her. The man accepts the challenge, and the Tengu puts a spell on the man's eyes to allow him to see the Jorogumo in her true spider-like form. When the man sees her, he forces himself by sheer will not to scream or to flee, but instead faints on the spot. Impressed by his tenacity, the Tengu grants his permission and the two marry. Although this is a much more modern and unlikely version, and it's not as well enjoyed, as it denies what the Jorogumo essentially is. Because at the end of the day, a Jorogumo is a spider. A spider who has learned a brand new tactic for catching a brand new prey. They see humans as food, and that's all. Any love or romantic affection shown is likely all an illusion, meant to lure their prey to their death. But that hasn't stopped some modern anime and manga from trying to make them more appealing or friendly. Monster Masume, for example, gave us the uh, Arachne, Rachnera Arachnera, a sexy and seductive spider woman with a dislike of humans but a fetish for bondage. Your kind may act like you want to help, but in the end you can only accept people who are like you. It makes me sick. The rest of me only invokes feelings of fear and disgust. Actually, hmm? your legs are, um, how should I put it? Well, they're captivating. Huh? And I myself created a character named Sarah, a friendly drider who just wants to be helpful and supportive of their friends and family. A big sweetheart. But the common conception of the Jorogumo is that they are predators and should be treated as such. Now there is a Yorogumo in For Honor that must be confronted with. How does it compare? The Yorogumo in For Honor is a typical specimen of any Yorogumo with a few minor differences. In most stories, the Yorogumo does not put up a fight or act confrontational or aggressive. In most versions, they prefer to subtly seduce or draw in their prey rather than fight them. Whenever their victim does fight back, they tend to flee or retreat, avoiding confrontation. This is vastly different from the similar yokai Tsuchigumo or Yamagumo, both spider yokai that actually did fight their prey. But there's also another difference. The fact that Jorogumo isn't really a mother of yokai. While a powerful and recognized yokai, to be sure, she is not a mother to them. However, in some lore and mythology, yokai may be attracted by the power of another, and so if a Jorogumo were especially powerful, it might draw the attention of lesser yokai in the area to where she was. Now, I do not fear spiders. In fact, I respect and like them. So long as a spider doesn't harm me or get in my business, I'm content to let them stay and do as they please. They keep the world free of pests and insects, and so I feel they deserve some thanks for that. In fact, there are quite a few Joro spiders that make their homes around my neighborhood, as I mentioned before. And on one occasion, I recall saving one that had lost its web thanks to a child with a stick. I don't know if spiders remember those who helped them, but in the off chance that this orb weaver reaches its 400th year soon, I hope it'll remember the kindness I showed it. Because in all the animal kingdom, among all the predators in our world, there is no greater hunter than the spider. And a spider who has learned how to hunt men? Truly, there are few things more terrifying or beautiful than a Jorogumo.